Every night at 6 p.m. here at Way 31, we are taking you deeper into the impact of coronavirus. And tonight we're joined by retired U.S. Army Colonel Buddy Brooke. He spent decades in the military and served numerous tours in Kuwait, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Thank you for joining us this evening, Colonel, and thank you for your service. Well, thank, thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for everybody to do this. Uh, I want to thank you and everyone else in, uh, that supports the military. Um, it's because of you that our military is what it is, wow. uh, and I appreciate the things that you do also. It's, it's an honor. First of all, tell us a little bit about your service and what you experienced. Oh, um, and I love the Army. <clears throat> Hang on a second. This is always emotional. I think about <clears throat> my career and some of my boys that you see on the picture behind here. Um, I joined the Army in 1976. I, I want to be two things growing up a football player or a, a mili in the military. And it wasn't a big call for 165 pound linebackers back in the 70s, so I joined the military and I loved it. I spent 40 years um, in combined service in the Army. I served on five, trained and operated on five different continents. So God in the Army and the, in the United States has blessed me the opportunity to go to a lot of places, do a lot of things, and train and meet a lot of people. Um, I served in Afghanistan and Iraq multiple times. And of course, uh, uh, all the theaters, theaters around that, and including uh, Africa. This is such an important day to honor those who, who made the ultimate sacrifice. Tell us a little bit more about who your thoughts are with today. <clears throat> well, um, thoughts with all those I have thoughts with all those families that uh, that lost uh, family members during any conflict. Um, you know, this, this day is not about veterans, it's about those who didn't come home. Uh, and it's about their families and the sacrifice that they, that they, pay, uh, they gave up. They sacrificed their lives so that, that we could uh, enjoy the liberties, both not of just of today, but that we have. Um, what they mean to me is they laid their life on an altar for the Bill of Rights, for the Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal. We believe that. We believe it sincerely, um, and these people believed it enough to bleed for it. So uh, I can do nothing less but continue to think about them, think about their families, do what I can, whatever I could possibly do for them. Uh, we only have one of the soldiers of my latest team that passed away prior to uh, you know to now, not in conflict. So that's what it means to me is that that Bill of Rights and, and that Declaration of Independence. We swore our oath to the Constitution, and that doesn't. That doesn't retire when we retire. This was certainly an out of the ordinary uh, Memorial Day, to say the least. Did you attend any ceremonies or observances, or was this all strictly uh, virtual for you? No, sir. There was. Um, I was really proud that Florence and Lauderdale County chose to go ahead and have um, the memorial ceremony. It's very important. These men and women laid down their lives when it was dangerous, when it was really dangerous, knowing that the potential of them coming home was slim, in, in many cases, depending on what your job skill was. So it's only right that, that we go out, uh, that our city chose to, to still have the memorial and to honor it. I was a bit disappointed that people were discouraged to attend, although I understand it for people that have you know, underlying conditions in the elderly, and especially a lot of elderly vets. So to all the elderly veterans out there um, who didn't get to come to honor those, I want you to know that we were thinking about you also when we were there today. Uh, you're on our hearts and on our minds. I want to talk and we have about, those... about the families that lost their members also. Right. I want to talk about those elderly vets for a moment. The coronavirus, of course, having a devastating impact on nursing homes. We've been reporting on that for weeks now. Many of our veterans are in these nursing homes. Can more be done, do you think, to protect them? Veterans, I'm trying to how to frame this right. Veterans, my mother's in an assisted living home, so I understand, you know, that aspect of it, and, and their immune systems are different, and they're elderly, elderly and may have underlying conditions. And veterans that are in the veterans nursing homes certainly do. I don't, you know, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not going to try to be one. Um, yes, social distancing and, and maybe keeping them where they can voluntarily quarantine and, and stay in places where they would be safer and wouldn't be susceptible to it. But I spoke to a lot of elderly veterans, and their opinion is that, you know, we chose to go into combat. I think we can go into town. 
Um, at least that's what one had told me. Um, you know, th these, these men, these women that served in World War II, Vietnam, Korea, that are still with us. Dr. Stevens, who spoke today at the Florence's uh, uh, ceremony, uh, what's he, 90s? He was, flew over Okinawa. Um, he's out there. So these, these are fearless people. Can we do more for them? We can always do, for, do more for those who, who, you know, have the inability maybe now due to whatever circumstances, health, age, take care of them. So we're responsible for that. As a veteran, as a father, we're responsible for our babies and our children. We're responsible for our elderly, those that came before us. Um, they, they, everything from settlers to, to warriors, um, they came before us. We have what we have because of those before us. We will have, as I enter my uh, later years in life, the children that are coming up today, I will survive only as well as they are capable of maintaining this nation and this economy. I've seen a lot of things through the years, and this nation is still the best that there is. And I've been on five of the seven continents. Uh, really well said. Thank you for that. Are you still in contact with active duty service members, and, and what has this pandemic been like for them? Um, well, since I don't have to give anybody any names, the <laughs> most of them think, look, we wear gas when, masks when we do gas masks. You know, we wear gas. We're used to this. Uh, we're used to being flexible. We understand it. We drive on. Uh, it's not a question of whether they like it or not. They say, you know, we're soldiers. This is what we're told to do. This is the procedures that have been put in place. And we're going to follow them. We're going to fight with a mask, but we're going to fight without a mask. We're going to train with a mask, or we're going to train without a mask, but we're going to be here. Yeah. Uh, so I still have a lot of good friends on active duty, and I do go and train and, and work as a contractor training soldiers and mentoring um, and doing military analysis. So I get to see them still on a regular basis. So it, it's good to still be involved with them and know that there's that much fire still left in their spirit. So as a veteran, how, how would you like people to honor our fallen military men and women? I mean, this, this Memorial Day gets a lot, of, a lot of heat sometimes. It's too, too much about the, the barbecue and the beaches. But how would you like to see people honor their service? Uh, barbecue, go to, the, go to the ceremony, then barbecue, go to the beach, get on the lake, and really enjoy the liberty, and I mean that the liberty and the freedom and the decision-making process of a citizen. Uh, as much as you possibly can. If, some, if it's worth dying for, it's worth living for. And keep those people in the back of your mind all the time who gave you that right. 100%. All right. Uh, most veterans that are out there and, and the ones that I know would always be happy to say, I hope you got everything out of this day that you could. Remember me, but don't forget to live as American. Amen. Colonel Brooke, thank you again for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir.